I saw you with a clock on your thing. I thought you were the timekeeper. Oh, okay. What's, what are you starting at? 15. That's one to make sure. Okay. <laughs> it takes me 15 minutes to clear my throat. Thank you very much for this and for including me. Um, I am excited about this opportunity, about our growing collaboration, about the very cool idea of looking at LC issues and learning healthcare systems. Uh, at my institution, and I suspect many of yours, your scientific and, for that matter, your clinical enterprises are driven by a number of different values and a number of different institutional forces. Uh, I find that my colleagues are really concerned, both because they're sincerely worried about getting it right, but also because they are regularly reminded by the Compliance Office, the Risk Management Office, the Office of the General Counsel, that there are dark and evil forces, and if you have a misstep here, you're going to get in trouble. And that the burden of advancing the the, the well, from everything from, from better science in general to the very idea of a learning healthcare system, that that burden is on the university. The university, the U, U, UM as we call it, where I come from. <laughs> Lest there be any ambiguity. Um, uh, is, is like UM. Somebody here from Manitoba too, right? From UM. Um, uh, we all have very similar missions, and I think we have very similar values. And what I wanted to share with you today was the idea that we need to broaden that just a little bit. Um, at, one, at one point, in response to what someone was saying, I, was, I, was, I, was, I wanted to blurt out, how should I put this? Sorry, sorry they're all, so, sorry we're, we're, we're mm, sorry to have all these impediments uh, to, 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 to having us help prevent you from dying too early. Um, I, 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 I'm, it's okay to be a little bit provocative, right? I've, I've been given just a little license, a brief license. <laughs> But, I, but, I, but, we're, but, but we want to move forward in a sober way that actually accomplishes what, what are sometimes contradictory, contradictory values. I hope I, hope I don't say anything um, uh, that might un untoward. And in fact, I think what I have to say is actually obvious. To quote a dear old colleague uh, of mine uh, from Dartmouth, if I seem to say anything profound, you've probably misunderstood me. Clinical and population health science have always been information intensive, able to presume the consent of beneficiaries, and quite utilitarian. We, we only recently thought, I mean, can you imagine John Snow? No, I mean, I don't mean that one. I mean, I, I, I mean the one whose patients, cholera patients, lived around London and he put dots on a map, right? It would be unthinkable for him to have been, been told that he has to get someone's permission to put a dot on a map where their house is. I was talking to a colleague. Suppose, suppose, suppose we, were, we were both, you're, you're, you're a lawyer, though, right? I am a lawyer, yeah. Right, I'm a Watch philosopher. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, think we should, I think we'd have a very cool multi-specialty group. But suppo suppose, for example, um, we're patients, and our doctor here examines you and treats you for your left kidney disease. Does a good job, thank you very much. And then later discovers that I have left kidney disease and wants to treat me. Would it be okay if she used what she learned taking care of you to treat me? Yes. Does she need to ask my permission to do that? No. It's a reductio argument. The entire history of the health profession has been based on observations, analyses, and the sharing of them. Uh, and now, obviously, it's a little more complicated than that now, but I want you to hang on to that core value. Okay. Um, the scope of what we're trying to capture and, and make sense of and metabolize is vast. I, 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 find, I find that that as the information scales up, if not our ability to manage it, we need to be more nimble and smart about thinking about how to organize it so that it's parallel to those other and I think uncontroversially shared values. Okay. By the way, our colleagues in epidemiology and public health uh, would be forgiven if they blink their eyes. Uh, uh, at, at public health departments have never had consent forms, have they? It would be irresponsible of them to go around and say, may we, may we put the, the, the fact that you had the inf influenza or HIV and add that to our database? 
So I might say no, in which case your database is useless. Um, this, we've had discussions so far about different kinds of data and sources. There's clinical data, research data, public health data. There's a growing chorus, if you will. I think it's a fine chorus that says these are artifacts. These distinctions are, have evolved because that's the way we've, we've mm, our risk management and legal system identifies risk. <coughs> but I would suggest in this learning healthcare system, it's a distinction without a difference. What does it matter under whether you learned it in a clinic, whether you learned it from a research protocol, whether you learned it because you were gathering public health data? Um, somebody's already mentioned the right to benefit from science. I'm of the view that privacy and confidentiality were never seriously considered to be hard barriers, that research has long relied on, on trust, which most of us still enjoy at our institutions, and that the way to move forward is to have better protocol. I think the greatest threat to our institutions actually is, is nothing the patients worry about. It's, it's ransomware. Uh, and, and if you're worried about trust, worry about it there. Not because a bunch of people of goodwill were trying to do better science, but that's an aside. I think that some of the reasons we have challenges with the, with the groups that we want to in, engender trust in, maybe it's a matter of health literacy, but it's also a matter of we're very, very fashionable creatures and, and we talk about these you know, data and clouds and big data and super duper big data and, <laughs> and, and I think all of these terms serve us poorly and undermine what is already a really difficult evidentiary challenge related to, to, to getting people to understand what it is we do in academic medical centers and what in fact we're aspiring to do with learning healthcare systems. Um, I would urge you also that, that the, the, the uses of the information technology are raise challenges, ethical challenges that are not simply related to privacy, they're related to appropriate use and users of information systems and decision support systems. Uh, the, 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 the role of humans in making decisions, I think, is really quite challenging. And I think we've also made so far a complete hash of interoperability. If I were not going to trust you was real, to, to use my data, it wouldn't be because I think you're going to say Ken's got left toe disease. What, what was it? Kidney disease. <laughs> It'd be because I know y'all can't share data with each other in ways that matter to me. Um, I, I, I'm a philosopher who chairs ethics committees, and I write notes in patient charts for, in, in different charts. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we could have the same structure for do not resuscitate order status in both vendors' charts? Wouldn't it be nice if we sort of knew when we were supposed to not <laughs> resuscitate a patient? Is there market share that the electronic health record vendors can gather on how well we make sure we don't not resuscitate people inappropriately? So I brought together a meeting. Well, I thought I was bringing together a meeting of different vendors so we could share best practices. And some of them didn't come, you see, because they regarded their screenshots as intellectual property and didn't want to share it. If your patients don't trust you, I don't think it's because of you. I think there's something else they don't trust, and you are the rep and we are the representatives of it. I just saw this, and I thought, how? <laughs> As you can see, uh, there's, it's, a, it's a storage device for information, 1956. Now, I obviously, I do not intend to suggest that privacy and confidentiality are not really important. But as you've already heard, they're not absolute values, and we make a mistake if we don't balance them against others. I want to suggest, and this may be the first provocation, is learning healthcare systems raise no new ethical challenges. It's just a lot more data and a lot more benefit to be gained from it. Um, I do not think that the people we call privacy advocates who insist that, that privacy always wins are right, and I think we have given them far more bandwidth than is credible. I actually. I had this awful hypothesis. Wouldn't it be interesting if the people who we are most concerned about, how should I put this? Is this being recorded? Yes, good. live. Oh, oh good. <laughs> I had the thought that the people who want to opt out of all the systems because, they're, because they want to invoke their right to privacy, wouldn't it be interesting if that's a certain percentage, and we're trying to study this, in fact, the project someone mentioned with the, the, uh, the IU, University of Florida, uh, and actually University of Miami project, is trying to identify what, in terms of electronic consent, who opts out and why. And there's still, there's still information to be gathered there, but wouldn't it be interesting if you found out those who consistently opt out of analysis of their de-identified data 
also believe that vaccines cause autism, also believe that fluoride is a, is a, is a actually it might be a Russian plot now, um, uh, or, or, or who believe we live in a country that doesn't have enough bullets and guns. Oh, what if, the co what if those cohorts overlap? I, if any, by the way, if anybody here believes that vaccines cause autism and believes that we need to have more guns, I'm sorry I was not speaking to you. <laughs> but we do have people who, in fact, emphasize privacy over public health, risk little, if anything, and benefit from others' contributions. We're all as healthy as we are because people we trust analyze information of people we don't know to learn how to inform clinicians and people and public health and policymakers how to reduce risk and improve the quality of health care. So if I were to say to you, what do I want my daughter vaccinated for? Thank you all for getting yours vaccinated. Or if I say, you know, if I ever needed a kidney, I'm really glad y'all are organ donors, but I sure wouldn't want to do that being so yucky. Or I really want to make sure that I have good health care, good law enforcement, good defense, good environmental protections, and good health care. But you wouldn't want me to pay for that, would you? That would be big government. I couldn't possibly have that as a matter of un un unpacking my moral responsibility to my compatriots. <coughs> Let the recording show that I smiled significantly at that point. <laughs> that I think that what we can do, and this is a thread, by the way, we, we were not in touch with each other before, so I hope what you're able to do, Jody, is th weave these together uh, in, in, in ways that I think will be most compelling and useful for a successful evolution of learning healthcare systems, is let's make clear that we do not need to deprive ourselves of privacy rights in order to improve our health, that we need smarter laws and policies, that we need to recognize our duties to each other, that selfishness is still not a virtue, no matter how many times people tell you it is, no matter how many times, I, 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 is that a country, do I disagree with me? Of course not. Um, that learning healthcare systems are the manifestation of that understanding, um, and that the public health obligation to gather and analyze data in a responsible way is and perfectly analogous to the, that of nurses and physicians to treat their patients. Um, I, I, I note that I, those of us who get to teach nursing and medical students tell them they have a responsibility to take care of people independently of their ability to pay. I assume that's sort of uncontroversial also. Well, what happens if you happen to live in a country, hypothetically, that didn't have a functioning health care system? And, um, and, 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 and what little of it worked, uh, there, were, there, were actually, there were actually people hard at work to try and undo it. Can you imagine? And, and that reduces coverage to people who, when they get sick, are going to show up precisely at the institutions where I've told my medical students they have a duty to treat them. Stop turfing your social problems to medical schools and public hospitals. The trust is, as you've already heard, we weren't in touch with each other, so that those of you who are saying, how cool is it that everybody's mentioning trust? I, I trust is complicated. It's really complicated, as I've already hinted. I think the reasons people don't trust us in academic centers is not because they think we're going to put in the newspaper that they've got left kidney disease. I think it's because they think we're selling their data to somebody. I think their motivations, and there's some research that shows this, when you ask ordinary people, may we use your information in some jurisdictions, they say, we thought you were already. Be responsible of you in the public health department not to do that. That's what civil society requires. Thank you for your service. As opposed to how dare you use my de-identified data that you could have re-identified if the hackers in Estonia had gotten hold of through the ransomware, but you didn't. So thank you for doing a better job helping take care of me. Um, that that this, the LC conference is something that when I first heard about it, I was very excited about. There's a national group that, that through the, the, the informatics and ethics and LC communities are moving forward in ways that I think are exciting. Uh, and I just to, to remind us why it is we want to have that and how it is that we can actually make a partnership that puts ethics at, at the front table. Um, we have precedents for all of this. Uh, I'm, I'm from you all don't have many hurricanes here, I've heard, but, um, but making big decisions that affect lots of people with probabilistic data may be the greatest challenge we face. The trust that we want to um, underscore is trust that I think patient duties match, and I've enumerated a number of them here. We need to earn our trust, but we need to not bend over in the directions I think some people suggest that we need to. Here you see Ken's suggestions for how we can do that, uh, which I will leave there as I pause with you about to say zero minutes remaining. You have 30 seconds. 
30 seconds. Well, I just want to say 14 things. Um, the, that, that right, the right to benefit from science and our, uh, and our duty, our motivation, the spirit of what those of us in academia want to do when it comes to reducing the burden of disease and improving the health of populations, I think is an opportunity. I, my only despair is that we actually are surrounded by compatriots who, who don't recognize that one of our greatest public health problems is lead. I mean bullets, uh, and, and, and that their values are, are off a quarter of a turn in ways we've never seen before. This is a bit of a blip in the, on, in the, in the radar uh, that now is shared by a non-trivial percentage of our compatriots, and I think we have an opportunity to remind them why it is there's some values that are greater. Thank you. <laughs>